think that uh, you read that just like I wrote it. Pretty good. <laughs> Family, that's what it's all about. You people understand that as you get older, as you get out into the world. And I want you to meet my family. My daughter, Cheryl. Would you stand up, please? <laughs> Shane, my son. Shane's children, Max. We all know Max. Riley are here, uh, Cheryl's children, Corey, Jake, and we have one more, Christy. <laughs> Don't tell the guys, but she's my favorite. You know, you, uh, how fortunate you are, how fortunate we are, we five, that got this great award. And so everybody says, well, what did you feel like when you first got it? Well, I felt that I'm inadequate because I'm representing so many people that fought for, the, for me to be where I am. See, when I played here, we had a 28-game winning streak. That means one year we started a winning streak, 1950. We were undefeated in 51 national champions. We were undefeated in 52 national champions. And we lost one game in 53, and we were Rose Bowl champions. First year we could go to the Rose Bowl. So I really didn't know much about losing. <laughs> in fact, uh, they asked you, well, what did it feel like? Uh, well, we used to come in the locker room, and we used to say, uh, uh, we're so confident we're going to win. We say, where's the party going to be tonight if we win? <laughs> we're worried about the party. But no, that's just a joke. But I want to leave a little message with you. I want to leave a little message with you. And go back and look up and find out where you came from. What your grandfather did, what your grandmother did, what your great grandfather did, what your. I can tell you what mine did. I had five years. I went back five years, generations. My dad, my grandpa, and so forth. My dad had five years, my grandpa, great great grandpa. My sister was four years older than me. My sister was the first one in the five generations that graduated from high school. I was the first one to graduate from college. So we, were, we knew that part of life. My dad slept in the back of a car in Canton, Ohio, while he's waiting, trying to get a job for six months. Luckily, it wasn't winter. So there's a lot that be said. Go back and find out where they've been. I took my... I took Chucky's, my, my youngest son, daughter back to Scranton, PA, and we went down into coal mines. She was about seventh grade at the time, this last summer. Well, she, I bought her a book about three years ago. It's called The, the Boys, and called The Mine Boys That Worked in the Mines and so forth. Well, she went down there, and when we came back, we went back to Syracuse University, where my boy is. And we, sta we sat there, and she said, uh, Dad, where's that book? She went out and got the book and sat down for about two or three hours. She read about the book, about the kids, what she went to. So I think she's a lot better. Now, before I pass away, before I die, I hope to get all the kids down there, for them to see where they came from. And probably one of the uh, proudest moments I had was my son Shane. Two years ago, where I was up at his house in Traverse City, and he said, Dad, what's Father's Day mean to you? I said, Father's Day to me, it means shirts, ties, handkerchiefs you don't want. <laughs> what's it mean to you? He said, I am so happy that we had the grandfather that we had. 
that sacrificed everything so I could have this house here and you could have your house here and my kids could go to school where I want them to go to school. He said that made me unbelievably happy. Well, I said, well, I won there. There's one that's on my side, so I have to get the rest of them. But they're okay. I like them. And I tell you this, you, you, you young people out there, like we're talking about winning and losing. They said, well, what did you do when you lost that game? You cry. I said, I never cried in coaching. 26 years I coached in the National Football League. I coached Michigan State for 12 years. I never cried after a game because I played as hard as I could. I did everything I could to win as a player and as a coach. I did everything I could as to win. Do you hear me? So there's no reason to leave any tears or, or shed anything. It wasn't good enough that day. It wasn't good enough that day. So that's what I felt, and that's what I felt down deep inside, that you have to, have to, Every day, say what you want to be. Okay, for example, I want to see the people that are getting awards today. Raise your right hand if you want to get at the top of your profession. And all Americans, so just raise your right hand for me, you people that want to do it. Let me see the hands. You just, I want to see the ones that want to be it. Okay, I'll tell you how you can get, get there. I can't promise you you can get there. But you have to outwork every guy on your team. You have to outwork every guy in your league. You have to be the best conditioned guy. First in line for everything you do. In other words, if there's seven tr tries we're going to get, and there's six guys, you be the guy that with two tries. You have to be the best of everything to have a chance. Mo, I think we'll go along with this, to have a chance. That doesn't mean you're going to be the best football player. That doesn't mean you're going to be the best basketball player. It doesn't tell you anything like that. It tells you you have a chance if you do that. And that's the only thing I've ever felt, the only thing I ever tell my kids. Everything I have ever told my grandkids, play as hard as you can, just do as hard as you can, go every day and prepare yourself to do what you can do best. Uh, also, I would like that this time to introduce my wife, Luann. Sometimes I pass her off as my daughter. <laughs> Thank you.